Today, we're talking pass-through, and I'm trying to design my pass-through seals so I can have a pass-through between the cab and the camper. My, my initial thought is from uh, go ahead and do my articulation test. This was a very basic articulation test in my last video that you hopefully saw. Well, I went ahead and jacked up the opposing wheels as high as I could with the jacks that I have, which was nowhere near enough to really stretch the suspension, particularly with it being unloaded. So I don't really know exactly how far or different the cab and the camp are going to twist. All I do know is they're actually twisting more than I expected. And I say more because the subframe, the Earth Cruiser subframe that I purchased from them is actually bolted down to the chassis frame at the front here, and that's where it's stationary. It does not pivot at the front. And then it has two pivots at the back, two spring mounts at the back. So more one midway down and one at the rear. And so that allow the chassis frame rails to, of course, flex and pull away from the subframe. You get way the subframe stays straight and level while the chassis rails can go ahead and, and essentially flex and stretch or pull away. And so I figured at the front here, it's not going to move that much. The two aren't going to twist that much from each other because there should be that much frame twist in the very limited distance. They call it roughly about four to five feet between the front of the chassis rails uh, to here. And of course, the front chassis rails, it really comes down to the front tire, which the front tire to the front of the... <laughs> So with only about this far between the center of the front wheel to the front of the front camper, I figure how much can the frame flex in that, that space, right? Or to about where the, the front frame rail or subframe mount is, which is again, it's only about two feet or so. It's not far. So I figure it really can't flex so much, but it flex more than I expected. Only being able to move the wheels, the opposing wheels, each up about three inches. So let's say I have six inches of flex entirely between the front and rear and from side to side. I just wasn't expecting to get about an inch of actual flex here between the cab or twist between the cab and the camper, but I did. So I went ahead and I bought some accordion rubbers, right? And these are accordion rubbers that actually have a press fit fitting on each end. So I figure I can build a basically a, a square frame, right? And attach these. And I say square frame because that's what I can build. I can't really build a round frame very easily. But I can build a square, a square frame very easily. And so if I can attach these two, it'll be fine, right? And then they would twist like this. So that was one idea. But again, I have a very limited distance between the cab and camper. And if you look right here, that limited distance is about really call it just a little more than like the, the width of a fist. So it's not that much space to build it for this to compress. It's really not going to accordion like this. Um, it's just going to twist, right? And so I figured this would be enough, but I have to find a way to attach these. And so I figured something like this would work. I also bought another sample here. It looks very similar, just doesn't have quite as much flex. And then I played with a couple other examples. So one that's very uh, a straight example where it would be on something like, like this, some, some fiberglass angle, because fiberglass angle I could glue to the front of this, this fiberglass wall, the camper, right? Gluing fiberglass to fiberglass can be incredibly strong. It's light and I need it to be light. The cab flips forward so I can't add a lot of weight. And also this is of course non-conductive. It's electrically insulated for the most part, but most, most importantly, it's really thermally non-conductive and that's key because I don't want to transfer, if I'm creating a wall of that pass-through, I don't want to transfer any heat from the outside to the inside or have condensation build up or even worse, get ice build up and then of course ruin the seal or the movement between the cab and the camper. So I was playing with some different ideas, some different uh, rubbers and, and seals like this and, and just some other ideas uh, again that are smaller boot and a, a very hard rubber um, such as this one which doesn't really have much give when it goes this way which I do need because again that cab is going to come forward and it's got to be able to compress and also I was worried about the wear and tear of this over time as dust builds up between the two and this is going to be rubbing as it's driving down the road and so that you know kind of wear and tear so I'm worried about all those things or thinking about all those things so I went ahead and said okay let me go ahead and build a square pass-through frame on the the pass-through and so that's what I'm that's what I'm, I've done. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And then I'm talking about why, a little bit how I did that, why I did it that way. And then we're um, going to go ahead and do a real flex test once the, the snow melts away and the dirt isn't just completely muddy as it has been. So I can do a real true flex test outside, really twisting these chassis rails, seeing what this, this chassis can do and how much flex I'm going to get so I can really see if my design will work because right now my idea is to essentially create a frame on the 
back of the camper here and the, the, the cab frame fits between those two with seals in, on both sides that are compressible so that it can move and both sides are going to have this kind of move, you know, this twist between each side and yet still retain a seal and be sealed all the way around from wind and rain and stuff like that. So that's the idea behind that. So let's get into it. And by the way, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. Please do like, hit the like button if you like this and what I'm sharing. I'm sharing this for you and for your benefit. So it's really there to help you and others out with your password designs or other camper designs and things you're building. So I'm hoping it helps. Do certainly let me know in the comments. Any thoughts or suggestions or recommendations or ideas for material or ideas of ways to do this so you can help me make sure I'm designing and building something that's really going to work well. Thank you. So I get busy with a friend taking measurements of the current Earth Cruiser pass-through frame so that I can go ahead and square this off with some fiberglass bar and also U-channel all the way around to essentially create a nice rectangle that's equidistantly spaced from the front wall of the camper. So I get busy, go ahead and measuring out this fiberglass U-channel and also the bar. And again, while I'm using fiberglass in this case is because it's incredibly structurally strong. It's a great replacement to aluminum or steel and yet it's lightweight, it's not thermally conductive and so it works incredibly well for this purpose. Okay, noise. And as you can hear from the motor bogging down with the cutoff wheel and the smoke that you see here, the cutoff wheel does burn it a little bit and does bog down somewhat. A laminate blade or a aluminum blade does cut this actually better. And so I went ahead and switched over to that later on in the cuts with this FRP, which just a tip for you works really well. So I got busy cutting these U-channels and also these bars that are of the same width and thickness. And the idea is I can put bulb seals on the ends of these sections and put, have that compressed up against the camper as well as also put some cushioning foam in between the two that would also be insulative. These were then adhered to the Earth Cruiser fiberglass pass-through frame with some very strong structural adhesive sealant made for marine applications, so very applicable for any outdoor use and also completely water resistant and so forth. And uh, I'll show you the finished product here soon. done what have I built well let's take a little more look here this is a little more of a detailed look and here is the frame that's actually been built and glued in it's incredibly strong uh, and it also seals this up and leaves me just a little small gap here between the two let's take another look around the other side so this right here is a little better idea of what I've done I have a channel on the top the idea here is that Water would come in here, I'll have a channel that will go up like this and create another seal here, a secondary seal with a seal coming down or another channel coming over the top here. So I'm creating a seal at the top to let water drip away and then any water or snow that builds up in here would essentially drain off, right? And this is all sealed up and glued on. There's also a water gap be behind here, which is a really nice feature of this Earth Cruiser pass-through. And that water and snow comes off the top of the cab here, um, or that reflects, bounces off the top of the camper uh, body, will then come in this channel and then go ahead and run off. Um, so that's the idea behind this. And this creates me, gives me structure that I can attach seals and things to. So that's the idea behind this. It is very strong. I need to figure out again how to really make this seal up well. My idea was again to put kind of a U-channel on the front of the camper here that would go around the inside and the outside with some really soft compressible foam on in both sides of that and then a the seals on the inside here, a bulb seal on the inside of this and also some 90 degree seals that would press up against both sides inside and outside here. So I have a, a initial seal of called a primary seal. Um, some insulation, a secondary seal, some other insulation, and even a tertiary seal on the inside. So it'd be pretty much in the water would have to, of course, pass in the air to have to pass a, a complete
complete U-turn, a 180. So it'd be pretty impossible, I think, for any water or air or dirt really to get through. So that's the idea behind this. I am a little worried that there's gonna be more flex in this chassis than I'm anticipating from what I've already seen in my initial flex test. And so basically lifting the opposing wheels up each an inch or three inches and getting an inch of movement at the, between the twist between the cab and camper up at the front here means I'm getting basically an inch of movement for six inches of frame, frame flex. And that to me was more than I had anticipated at this location here, but the cabin camper being so close up to the front here and where the, the subframe mounts at the front. So I'm a little worried that my idea of this with basically about allowing for a movement of about, an, uh, of call it roughly an inch and a half to two inches in, in each direction just may not be enough. So let's say three inches accumulatively. If I extrapolate that six inches of, call it total travel twist to a one inch of movement, that means in order to get three inches, I would really have to have that be about 18 inches. 18 inches seems very probable to get. That means basically a front and a rear, rear wheel would each be nine inches uh, opposed from each other. A rear, say, axle or wheel up nine inches and a front down nine inches. That to me seems like this is not enough. Like it's gonna, I, I could potentially in this chassis probably get at least 12 inches on, on each of the front and rear wheels. And if I'm getting 12 inches, that really extrapolates about four inches of movement here or more. I think that that's very probable and I think there's even possibly more. So I think I'm going to have to have something, a different set of maybe a solid frame, more of a, a much wider frame or in order to not shrink down the size of the pass through or a flexible frame. And so that's the route I'm leaning towards, but I'm going to wait until I do this true outdoor frame twist and articulation test. We'll share in a future video when I do that and share it with you so you can see, but do provide some comments, ideas on how we might be able to do this. And so uh, other, however people have done it. So I might be able to uh, help make sure I can design something that's gonna be good. It's gonna keep out the air through in this pass through water, snow, dirt, and noise. And, and also keep provide for thermal comfort so the, and, and seal up and hold up over time. And so give me your ideas and thoughts. Thanks, thanks so much for watching, Sharon. Appreciate it. Bye.